Hello, my name's Mark Sherburn from Eastern Fish and Game. Welcome to the trout hatchery here at Nongataha. So we breed uh, fish out in Nongataha to stock mostly the, the Rotorua lakes. So in a lot of places around New Zealand, trout are self-sustaining, so they'll look after themselves. The populations will, will essentially manage themselves. But in other locations, such as the Rotorua lakes, we don't have good spawning. So there, there isn't the habitat for trout to spawn naturally. So they need essentially a, a hatchery uh, to boost the population and uh, make the place of what would be a good spawning stream. The other thing about the Rotorua Lakes is it's a popular area. Uh, people like to fish here and people also like to harvest fish from here. So anglers like to go out on the lake, catch a couple of trout, take them home and have them for dinner. And they can afford to do that here because the hatchery is boosting those fish populations with liberations. So hatchery trout, uh, like all trout, start with an egg, a fertilised egg. We collect uh, brood fish from Lake Tarawera. We bring them back here to the hatchery and we'll milk them uh, of their eggs. And we incubate the eggs in uh, an incubator for about a month. And we remove dead eggs from the, from the incubator to stop fungal growth, keep the eggs nice and healthy, uh, check that their eyes are developing uh, and they're looking uh, strong and healthy. Uh, put them into troughs where they hatch out as alevins about a month and a half. It depends on the water temperature and the species. And the little alevin consumes his yolk sac. He looks like a, essentially like a little orange coloured tadpole. He's equipped with that yolk sac, which means that he can stay in the, str in the spawning stream. He can stay under the substrate where his mother has, has dug him and uh, stay free from predators and uh, just consume that yolk sac and grow larger, start to develop uh, functional fins and gills and such like, and do well. When that yolk sac's been consumed, suddenly he'll think, oh, I'm starting to get hungry. It's time to go on the forage for some food. And in the hatchery tanks, of course, that means they'll come from the bottom of the tank, which will be covered up from UV light, and they'll swim up to the surface, and the hatchery operators need to have their wits about them to catch that moment when they come up looking for food and we'll start to sprinkle some food on the surface. In the wild, of course, those little alevins, they wriggle out through the, through the stream bed, through the stones in the stream bed, and uh, they go foraging for food. Of course, a pretty tough environment. In the wild, in the hatchery, of course, we, we nurture these things along and make sure that um, the best possible survival occurs. So when the fry is finally swum up, it's called, swims to the surface foraging for food, uh, it starts to develop for a few weeks and then we gradually move them from, from the small troughs where they're situated into the larger tanks and they get gradually larger and larger, bigger water capacity, uh, bigger pallet size, the, the food size goes from half a millimetre or less than half a millimetre right up to four millimetres and there's six or seven stages of food in between. We feed them bigger food and more food every day, eventually moving from them from inside the hatchery to big capacity rearing ponds outside. The fish will grow for a year, roughly, and they'll get to about 18 centimetres, and then we'll uh, collect them up, fin mark them or tag them or both, and then pop them in the tanker, truck them out to one of the local lakes for liberation.